Welcome back to In Focus, everybody. Climate activists have officially reached a new level of insanity. I know you didn't think it was possible, neither did I, but they managed to, as they always do. They're now suggesting that doctors should reduce the amount of anesthesia that they give their patients in an effort to lower greenhouse gas emissions. You can't make this up. Save your planet or save your patient, I guess. Now, the, this suggestion was made last week by Dr. Mohammed Fayad during the American Society of Anesthesiologists annual conference. This doctor, who's a senior anesthesiologist at Detroit's Henry Ford Health, referred to the conference to a study that reportedly found doctors can lower the flow of anesthetic gas without affecting patient care. <laughs> but now, just one week later, this study has somehow disappeared from the ASA website. It looks like it's been scrubbed completely. I wonder why. Let's bring in Mark Morano to maybe answer this, discuss further, founder of The Climate Depot. Mark, great to have you. He's also author of The Great Reset. Mark, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, <laughs> this, 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 this study was completely scrubbed from the website, the super fact-based scientific study. Uh, why do you think that is? Well, I think they got a lot of attention. I, I highlighted this. It went viral on Twitter. Uh, the New York Post picked up on this study. And just when you thought, it's like the old Al Pacino movie, you know, he tries to get out of the mob. Just when you think I'm out, they pull me back in. Just when I think the climate movement has, got, has reached peak insanity, they do something else to pull it back into the insanity. This is even unprecedented, you know, it's not quite unprecedented, but I would have thought they would try to hide this from the beginning. This was not just some lone doctor at the American anesthesiologist meeting in Orlando. This was a study with co-authors that was posted on their website about how you know, not, not, not we should adjust anesthesia levels for patient care, but because of the emissions. And they have numbers. It's equivalent to driving to 470 miles in a car. So now when you're going into surgery, to, you know, potentially life-saving surgery, you're supposed to think of, gee, how many miles is this? I hope they don't give me enough. I'd rather feel the pain for the planet than actually be put under. Are we, is our new standard of medicine Civil War era shot of whiskey and bite a leather strap? Is that where we're headed, Addison? Unfortunately, it seems that way. Yeah, it, it apparently is. Now, we don't want to put words in his mouth or, or any of these people's mouths at all. Here is a quote directly yes. from this. Quote, anesthesiologists can play a role in reducing the greenhouse gas emissions that contribute to global warming by decreasing the amount of anesthetic gas provided during procedures without compromising patient care. So, that... Sure, that might be true. They might not compromise patient care and that they can still do the surgery, but uh, are they going to be able to do the surgery without the patient kicking and screaming and writhing in pain, Mark? Like, how, how is that going to work? And second of all, you, you bring up the, the, the car thing. How much is this actually going to reduce the carbon footprint? Is this actually going to stave off the purported sun monster? I mean, that's the thing. There's, I mean, this is just complete virtue signaling with your health at the center, yeah. with everyone's health. <laughs> so the old slogan, you know, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy is the slogan of the great, of the great reset. Well, now it's as if your doctor will consider the planet first, you second, and you'll be happy. This is where we are. There are follow-ups on this. If you look deeper into the literature, they talk about like a gynecological surgery that's more intricate being thousands, equivalent to thousands of miles of a car. Open heart surgery, anything that takes longer is going to be that more emissions, which then either instills some sense of guilt, but it's a weird thing to put on doctors in pressure. Because remember, in my same report, which is still the headline of Climate Depot, I have the whole history of healthcare workers pledging, the healthcare community, hospitals, healthcare industry, committing to net zero. And this is all part of a public health climate merging that's happening. And it's scary stuff. If you go back to 2020, Addison, the American Cancer Society openly fretted about the carbon footprint of cancer care. So you're gonna to go to a doctor who's like, hey, well, I would give you this. I think that would get rid of the cancer, but you know, the emissions on that are just so big. I know you don't wanna harm the planet. So we're gonna increase your risk of dying by going less on the chemotherapy here. Can you imagine any doctor thinking that? But this is how they're, to, to, to illustrate the point, 
Harvard University is now, for the first time ever, including climate, into their curriculum for young doctors in order to get a Harvard medical degree, a medical degree, not a degree in sustainability, but in order to be a Harvard doctor, you're gonna have now an entire curriculum on climate, emissions, and net zero. This is insane. We have to now stand up. And by the way, the good news out of this, and you pointed it out at the open, they pulled it. So think now of the transgender surgeries we've been witnessing of underage kids. People point it out, and then immediately these major hospitals pull the websites, they pull it, they try to hide from it. So there is a sense of shame by the anesthesiologists uh, that they pulled this study and it's no longer on their website within 48 hours of me highlighting it. So that was a good news. So there is a sense of shame, but this is now endemic in our entire healthcare and medical community. Well, there, and there absolutely should be a sense of shame. It may, maybe anesthesiologists could could use their voice uh, and use their 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 power not to uh, make their patients miserable and suffering and writhing in pain. Maybe they can use it to call out uh, the environmentalists like John Kerry who are flying private yeah. jets to Davos to talk about uh, very important things with Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum. Bill Maher, even you know he's no he's no yes. stone cold conservative. Uh, he's more of a classical liberal, but even he is fed up with with the John Kerry types. Here's a clip of him from his, his show calling them out. It's a new year, and I'd like to come clean. My name is Bill. <laughs> <sighs> and I fly private. Now enjoy this fun photo collage of some of your favorite stars and <laughs> politicians who speak about the need to reduce our carbon footprint, but who are always on private planes. Well, Mark, he makes a great point. You're, yep, your quick reaction. We got about 20 seconds. Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed. If This is the way you apologize. This is the way you handle it if you're a hypocrite. And I give full <laughs> kudos to Bill Maher. He, and he actually said it's like heroin. Once you fly private once, you'll never stop. If only John <laughs> Kerry and, uh, and the UN chief and Al Gore would just admit it, I think we could have actually a real conversation with them. But they never will. So kudos to Bill Maher for standing up and admitting the obvious. Yeah, at least at least he's going to own his stuff, right, Mark? You, it's, uh, <laughs> you love to see. He's funny. He's funny sometimes, and he's right sometimes. So uh, glad to see he was right well, uh, on this count. Mark, it's... He was, uh, COVID was an eye-opener for yeah. Bill... Uh, Bill Maher, and he's come around on a lot of issues uh, that conservatives can cheer Bill Maher on a hell of a lot these days. Yeah, yeah, especially more, more so now. Mark Morano from the Climate Depot, great to have you on. Appreciate it. Thank you, Addison.